Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, thank you um, to Raymond for calling people to action and to volunteer. I managed to answer his call for today. <laughs> um, and thank you also for this opportunity because um, every time I stand up in front of others and I have to share a message, I need to go through a, a very difficult grinding process of resolving uh, internal conflicts and issues and um, yeah, to, um, trying to reach a level where I can, where I can uh, stand uh, in front of others and share something uh, good or positive or inspiring. So I really wanted uh, to rest, actually. <laughs> the previous days I couldn't sleep well. Maybe I slept on average maybe three, four hours a night, so I was really exhausted. Um, but uh, as I mentioned, yeah, I try to to make the best of this opportunity and to find uh, um, maybe answers to my questions, to my dilemmas, or even to find a, a victorious uh, resolution. So I will try to share uh, part of that journey um, uh, with you. And... Um, I would like to start with the father's autobiography because that's where I I was scrolling through all books and scriptures and you know <laughs> podcasts and everything trying to find an answer um, something that would help me praying and all of that and and yeah I found the uh, true father's uh, uh, poem written at fourteen or fifteen. Crown of Glory, and um, um, I want to read it, um, and I hope you can excuse me if I get emotional, <laughs> because I told you I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit exhausted. So, Crown of Glory, um, when I doubt people, I feel pain. When I judge people, it is unbearable. When I hate people, there is no value to my existence. Yet, if I believe, I am deceived. If I love, I am betrayed. Suffering and grieving tonight, my hand in my hands, am I wrong? Yes, I am wrong. Even though we are deceived, still believe. Though we are betrayed, still forgive. Love completely, even those who hate you. Wipe your tears away and welcome with a smile those who know nothing but deceit and those who betray without regret. O oh Master, the pain of loving, look at my hands, place your hand on my chest. My heart is bursting, such agony. But when I love those who acted against me, I brought victory. If you have done the same things, I will give you the crown of glory. Yeah, I was, as I was going, you know, through through the torment of my own uh, thoughts and anguish of how um, maybe things are unfair or, um, you know, situations, whatever, in the world or in, in my circumstances are unjust and, uh, you know, uh, and, go, you know, when you, when you feel like um, you've been mistreated or hurt or... Uh, maybe abused in some sense, or falsely accused, uh, or attacked, you know, uh, out of nowhere, unexpectedly. I don't know if that happens to you. Maybe I sound crazy, but for me, it's enough to go out the door, um, maybe shopping, <laughs> and uh, somebody will, you know, hit uh, the car with their door, or um, yeah, just walking, even walking down the street, people swearing and fighting. Uh, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I, I'm, I feel scared to go out of the house, to be honest, <laughs> because, you know, something not nice, what, what I consider not nice might, might happen. Or I might see something, you know. Um, yeah, so as I was, you know, uh, going through all this, um, through these thoughts and anguish, you kind of reach the limit to enter into resentment. And that's very dangerous, so I try to <laughs> stay away from that. Because uh, when you become resentful, it's, that's a steep slope, uh, and it's difficult to come out of it. 
So you're yeah, just biting my, you know, my tongue and uh, you know, clenching my fist and whew, I know what I need to do. I need to love, you know, I need to forgive. I need to, uh, I need to look up to heavenly parent and true parents. But it's really hard. It's really difficult. So yeah, I, I felt a bit uh, overwhelmed, but I realized that I lost the picture um, to some extent of uh, who we are, what we are doing, and heavenly parent, because many times we take out heavenly parent from our daily lives, from our uh, daily affairs, from our relationships. Yeah? And my conclusion was, um, simply put, yeah, true parents <laughs> and true father, you know, who, who was... Um, um, who was most mistreated uh, or falsely accused or um, treated unjustly in the history. Of course, we can say true father and then we can think of the past prophets and saints uh, and martyrs. So, in a sense, we, we are all called in this time and age um, to join those ranks. And it seems unbearable uh, if, you, if you really take it on, if you really take it in, you know? So, for example, in the Divine Principle, um, I referenced this last time I spoke in front of others, uh, section three in uh, Introduction to Restoration, part two of the principle, uh, talks about the providence of restoration and I. And uh, yeah, Father explains how at, at 14 or 15, sorry, I'm confused between you know, Asian counting and, <laughs> and Western counting of age. Jesus uh, appeared to him and, uh, you know, and called him to uh, take on his, uh, his mission and you know, to do great things. But I never associated what actually Father felt that Jesus is calling him to do. And it came to me that, why did Father write this poem, you know, about, uh, like, forgiving and loving? I think uh, Father's conclusion was, I'm called to martyrdom. I'm called to to suffering, <laughs> and uh, I'm called, you know, to to love and to forgive incredible, like unbearable situations. And he, I think, he summarized it in his life mission. He summarized it in in this uh, in this poem. From that moment on, uh, he goes on to say, a wise person will place hope in the future. And continue to move forward, no matter how difficult. Uh, sorry, um, did I jump something? Yes, a wise person will place hope in the future and continue to move forward, no matter how difficult it may be. A foolish person, on the other hand, will throw away his future for the sake of immediate happiness. I too, at times, held foolish thoughts when I was still very young, but in the end, I chose the path of suffering. Not suffering, says a wise person. But that's, the, that's what came to my mind. I choose the, the path of a wise person. <clears throat> I gladly offered up my life in order to pursue the way God desired. I could not have run away even if I tried. This was the only way I could have chosen. So why did God call me? Even now at 90 years of age, I wonder every day why God called me. Of all the people in the world, why did he choose me? It wasn't because I had a particularly good appearance or outstanding character or deep conviction. I was just an unremarkable, stubborn, and foolish young boy. If God saw something in me, it must have been a sincere heart that sought him with tears of love. Whatever the time or place, love is most important. God was searching for a person who would live with a heart of love and who when faced with suffering, could cough, up, 
cut off its effects with love. I was a boy in a rural village with nothing to show for myself. Even now, I insist uncompromisingly on sacrificing my life to live for God's love and nothing else. Then Father says, well, this is my mission, but what, is, what about you? So, as an individual, each one of us is a product of the history of the providence of restoration. Hence, the person who is to accomplish the purpose of history is none other than I, myself. So that is you know, each one of us. I must take up the cross of history and accept responsibility to fulfill its calling. To this end, I must fulfill in my lifetime horizontally, through my efforts, the indemnity conditions which have accumulated through the long course of the providence of restoration vertically. Only by doing this can I stand proudly as the fruit of history, the one whom God has eagerly sought throughout his providence. In other words, I must restore through indemnity during my own generation all the unaccomplished missions of past prophets and saints who were called in their time to carry the cross of restoration. Otherwise, I cannot become the individual who completes the purpose of the providence of restoration. You ready to run away? I'm just thinking of taking a holiday. <laughs> how I can uh, maybe uh, gain financial freedom, how I can spend more time with my family, with my children. That's all I want to do, live peacefully. <laughs> I don't want to bother anybody. I don't want to be bothered. I just want to you know, live in a tranquil uh, way, uh, you know, do good, um, expect nothing from the others. Yeah, so unfortunately, you know, all my holiday plans went in the air not uh, long ago. Because my wife, she's Ukrainian, she couldn't renew her passport since February, we applied. But for various reasons, which I will not name, um, yeah, we couldn't renew it. And we had to cancel everything. Um, so I couldn't enjoy my peace and happiness, <laughs> which we planned for. And um, um, yeah, it's... Why I'm saying this is because I want, I want to run away. And I think um, even Father says, you know, many times he rejected this calling. Um, but sometimes, you know, we are caught in a trap where there's, it feels like there's no escape. I'm thinking now about true mother. Who has suffered most uh, except true father? In his same shoes and position. Who has shared, you know, his anguish? and torment. We could conclude that, you know, true mother shared a huge deal of that uh, pain. And um, somebody said, you know, after father passed away, she could have easily um, retired, <laughs> you know? Not that she didn't have a chance before, like to, to, to escape. Um, her mission and calling. But this was a really good chance um, to go silent, you know, uh, peaceful, not march or advocate for anything, just uh, let things run by the system and by people who want to take charge. Um, so I'll try to conclude with, uh, with Mother's words because the topic is becoming quite heavy and I'll try to make it a bit lighter. <clears throat> uh, Mother talks about forgive, love, and unite. Yeah? So, ladies and gentlemen, we must forgive one another, love our families and neighbors, and unite under the banner of peace. My husband and I forgave those who were unforgivable and loved even the enemy that could not be loved, all for the sake of the heavenly parent and mankind. We call for the breakdown of borders that divide us while working in practical, way, in practical ways to unite people for the sake of world. P 
peace. Then she goes to, uh, you know, um, to explain all the times that um, father was unjustly imprisoned or tortured or beaten, uh, incarcerated in different countries around the world. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's difficult, yeah, to, to imagine or to, to feel or to really to experience what they had to go through. And I, I hope um, yeah, future generations won't, won't need to uh, have such a, such a life. But we are not there yet, unfortunately. And as I told you, as much as I personally want to escape, I don't know, what, something that happens on the other side of the world affects me directly. And um, the way to, to forgive and to love and to unite is very um, difficult, especially if we don't have examples or role models to do that. So fortunately, we have true parents, but it's not enough. Sometimes, you know, Resources run out, your energy, you know, we talk about burnout a lot. We talk about mental illness. Um, uh, we talk about, you know, even other things like suicide. So this, these things are present and are a danger to each one of us and to those around us. So I think um, sticking together uh, might alleviate some of that um, pain, some of that burden, and some of those uh, dangers. Um, I mentioned that my wife is Ukrainian, but um, and we are affected by this uh, war. But at the same time, I want to mention we have uh, Russian friends. Um, yeah, one of the people, one of the couples who helped us mostly in our lives recently especially in the United Kingdom, they are Russian-British. Then my wife, despite the war, you know, attends every week um, study sessions with, with uh, Russian-speaking sisters. And yesterday in the playground, somebody approached me <laughs> and uh, they said, I, I heard you are home educating your children and I'm, you know, I'm struggling now with the local authority. I want to home educate my daughter. Can, like, can you give me some advice? Can you help me? And I say, yes. Eventually I ask her, which languages do you speak? I speak Russian. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I could say, well, I don't want to help you, you know, <laughs> because I this and this and this, look, I couldn't enjoy my holiday or whatever, which is, you know, a light way to say how we are uh, affected by the war. Um, I don't want to go into details with our friends and, and um, relatives uh, living in Ukraine. But I could say, you know, just, I don't, you know, I don't want to talk to you, but I couldn't do that. <laughs> it didn't feel right. And actually I didn't hesitate because I just saw a person, a human being, you know, asking for guidance, for advice, for help. So I, you know, um, I felt a bit proud of myself, but not, not happy enough because, you know, okay, I can forgive one person, but, <laughs> What about all the other <laughs> situations? Um, the, the ultimate goal is to, to forgive and love in such a way that you feel you are one with the other person. That, that there's no different value uh, that you have apart from theirs. So Mother talks about oneness in heart, in body, in thought, and in harmony. <clears throat> Beloved blessed families and ambassadors for peace, it is easy for siblings to quarrel among themselves when their parents are not present. The reason such struggles continue is because children do not always understand their parents' intentions. We can understand our parents' intentions only when we create a bond of heart with them in true love. Who are our parents? Our ultimate parent is heavenly parent. So, if we understand, if we have oneness in heart with our heavenly parent and true parents, then there can be a way 
Of course, that might not always happen from both sides, but at least one side has to make this effort in the couple relationship, um, you know, um, in the community, at work, wherever. So you have to be that person. I have to be that person who, who goes to God, you know, and God, why do you love this person? How do you love this person? I often ask <laughs> this question, <laughs> you know, I don't understand. This person is terrible from my point of view and it's, make, it's hurting me, you know, that person hurts me. But at the same time, you say that person is, is your son or daughter. And even my brother or sister, help me, you know, how? How do you love that person? I have now two kids, <laughs> uh, two daughters, one and seven. So it's interesting to see how they come <laughs> for love uh, to us. They don't quarrel that much. They are quite, they, I mean, they're one year old. Uh, so they are quite good. But I can see sometimes this, uh, you know, potential conflict uh, coming up. <laughs> like uh, the, the one year old comes to hug me, you know, and I kiss her and then my daughter watches. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, comes also near and maybe tries to get a hug. Or the other times when my eldest one comes uh, to hug and I hug her, and then the, the smaller one just comes and pushes her away <laughs> for love. So, yeah, it's like, um, you know, I believe a heavenly parent and heavenly parents representative, two parents, true parents have to give. Um, love to everyone, to both sides. Even, like they said, you know, for, they had to forgive the unforgivable. Um, so, how far can this go? How, I mean, it's not how far, how, it's not how far forgiveness can go. Because, you know, human atrocities and, and hate and anguish and fallen nature are almost limitless to some extent. Um, I was surprised to hear one time from my uh, wife who attends a Women's Federation event that a lady from Rwanda whose uh, son you know, was killed in front of her uh, forgave uh, her son killer when she, when she met him after the, after the war finished. Um, so I thought, wow, if this is you know, one of the most terrible uh, things that happened in recent history, but actually she said it's not just that woman, it's the whole nation went through the process of forgiveness and reconciliation. So I was like, wow, is it really possible to, to forgive uh, like to that level, not just an individual, but as like a community, as a nation? So I think there is hope for us in, in every moment. Um, Trumada says, you must attain oneness in heart, oneness in body, oneness in thought, and oneness in harmony with the true parents. Your oneness with true parents must be manifested in your thoughts, emotions, words, and deeds. When you live your life as a true child who resembles the true parents, you will understand and feel that other people are not strangers, but your brothers and sisters who share the same lineage as you. By freeing yourself from internal anguish, you can ultimately bring an end to conflicts between nations, which are like the quarrels between siblings. Beloved leaders, ladies and gentlemen, all of us desire to live in happiness in a world of peace. We can attain this dream. Let us forgive our enemies, love our neighbors, as if, as if they were our own flesh and blood, and unite for the sake of peace. Let us advance toward one world under a heavenly parent. Join me in marching courageously forward until the day all people can live as brothers and sisters, as one great family. Oh, I'm shocked even now when sometimes I see Trumada with world leaders. <sighs> How can you sit, like, how can you love, how can you talk, how can you invite this person? I'm sure many of you uh, feel this, maybe sometimes. And actually, this is my first thought when I met the uh, unification movement. And I asked one elder brother who was dealing with VIPs, with politicians, I said, but 
but how can you deal with this group, you know, like this, this society of politicians, which, which have this, you know, like evil, like intentions and goals? And she was like, well, they are people like everyone else, you know, they are looking for love. <laughs> then that, that, you know, completely obliterated me that, at that time in my 20s. So, yeah, thank you uh, to have any parents. Thank you to parents. You know, next week we are celebrating Father's 10th Songhua anniversary. And based on, on these recent experiences that I have had, and based on this research and prayer and contemplation, my conclusion for this 10th anniversary is that Father's life summarized to is summarized to this, forgive. He, he was the one who forgave the most. And, you know, we talk about Jesus uh, forgiving while he, while he was on the cross. Uh, Father, forgive them for what they know now, what they do. And, uh, you know, he had three years of ministry when he was also beaten and persecuted. A true father, you know, went for over 90 years. Um, and... You know, some people who, I don't know, one of his child said that when he saw his father's skin, it was all scarred and bruised and, um, um, you know, like de deformed in a way. That's the, that's the image that I got, you know. So I think true father and true mother's life, you know, essence for me in this moment is they, they forgave the unforgivable. They, they loved, they reconciled, and they even united with, with those uh, people, or, you know, for that side. So, uh, yeah, I'm called to stay true to Father's uh, legacy and to true parents' calling. And um, I realized also this, this task... The, uh, you know, the true parents shared with us this blessing, you know, <laughs> responsibility um, is very heavy. And you may have seen brothers and sisters or, you know, people who have tried to walk this path, but eventually, you know, you fall down to your knees and it's, it's hurting, you know, on many levels, financial, you know, relationship-wise, um, and I don't blame <laughs> anyone for where they are or what they do, because I myself am struggling to walk this path. So, yeah, thank you for being here together today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for volunteering. Thank you for, yeah, just uh, <laughs> existing and being in each other's presence. And, yeah, let's give glory to Heavenly Parent and True Parents and and try to encourage or help each other, be more forgiveful, you know, like whatever crazy situation happens, um, and try to reconcile and, you know, pick ourselves up and go together. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>